After more than a year, the masks are finally coming off in New Jersey. The rain will be heavy at times. The winds picking up as well. What to expect by morning? It has the largest, most diverse Caribbean population in the world, and it's right in our backyard. New York Live goes inside Brooklyn's Little Caribbean. This is News for Now for Friday, May 28th. I'm Adam Cooperstein, and New Jersey is kicking off Memorial Day weekend by ditching the masks indoors. Starting now, the indoor mask mandate and that six-foot social distancing requirement for indoor and outdoor spaces is being lifted. So that means people can pack the beach, bars, or restaurants as long as they are adopting the state's rule change. New York and Connecticut already lifted their mask mandates last week, so Governor Murphy says New Jersey is doing this now because the state has seen a rise in vaccinations and more drops in infections and hospitalizations. We just think this is the right moment. Uh, it's, it's Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we got the Jersey Shore, which is an American gem, uh, and we feel we can safely take this step, and we're really excited to do so. But heads up, you will still need to carry around your mask. Individual business owners can still implement their own mask rules for customers and for workers, and we've seen in New York and Connecticut that many of them have kept those rules in place. In New York City, beaches open up for swimming on Saturday when lifeguards take their post for the official start of the season. And if you are planning to go to the beach, you can get vaccinated too. The city's gonna send out mobile vaccination units starting this weekend. Meanwhile, there's something missing at some Connecticut beaches this weekend, lifeguards. The state has only filled 62% of lifeguard jobs, just as beaches are expecting a flood of people, although the weather might help with this. Some people are blaming the shortage on competition from restaurants and gyms reopening. The state hopes to lure candidates, though, with starting pay of $14 an hour. People we talk to say you can't put a price on what a trained lifeguard brings. You want someone to be a second pair of eyes. Too risky. Too many freak accidents can, can happen. It's just not worth someone's life. This is the first time in many years that I've been in the parks and rec profession that we're shaking every tree to find uh, young people to work. If you or someone you know wants to apply for a Connecticut lifeguard job, you must be 16 years or older, but you don't have to be a Connecticut resident. We have new images now of the suspect still on the run after attacking a Jewish man in Times Square. Police are looking for these three men, who officers say beat Joseph Borgen. Borgen says he was followed from the subway on his way to a pro-Israel rally last week when people taking part in a pro-Palestinian rally yelled anti-Semitic slurs and beat him. A week after his attack, hundreds on Long Island are standing with him in support. They're still out there. They said they want to hurt me again. They can come after me again. What I want to do is hopefully pre prevent what happened to me from tapping anyone. At least one person has been arrested for the attack so far. Organizers of the rally on Long Island are now petitioning the state to strengthen New York's hate crime laws. In Connecticut, a bill legalizing sports betting and online gambling has been signed by Governor Lamont. The measure here allows the tribes who run the state's casinos to have in-person and online betting for sports games and fantasy sports. It also lets Connecticut Lottery have in-person and online sports betting, online keno, and online lottery games. It still needs federal approval, but the hope is to have it up and running for the start of the NFL season. Well, we had a really chilly but nice start to the day, and now the winds of change are blowing in tonight, Maria. It was so nice this morning. We had that sunshine. Big changes, though, of course. Heading into the evening, it's not just the showers to worry about. The winds are going to be picking up and temperatures are dropping. So only near 60 degrees by 6 p.m. That rain picks up in intensity through the evening as temperatures drop into the low 50s. By later on tonight, those winds will really be picking up. Let's talk about that heavy rain. It does move through by tomorrow morning, but we are still still left with the chance for some showers by tomorrow morning, although that steady heavy rain begins to move out. The winds a real problem because it's going to just add to the chill factor with winds out of the east really uh, starting tonight and through tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon in that 30 plus mile per hour range, especially along the coast, and that's going to keep things cool, keep things damp and definitely a little unsettled closer to the coast. Temperatures dropping into the 40s and 50s, which is where we're going to stay most of the day on Saturday. Island hopping right smack in the middle of Brooklyn. New York Live takes us to part of Flatbush that's known as Little Caribbean. 
Did you know that Flatbush, Brooklyn is home to one of the largest and most diverse Caribbean populations in the world? Well, in 2017, this area was designated as a cultural hub known as Little Caribbean, and today we're gonna to take a tour of this neighborhood, so let's go. Shelly, tell me more about the history of the Caribbean immigrants that are here. Caribbean immigration actually started in Harlem and then it started to push down into central Brooklyn. And people really came here for jobs, right? And so you had this huge wave of um, nurses as well as teachers. And ever since then, we've just been here opening small businesses and uplifting our community. So talk to us about your company, Caribbean, and what you do. Yeah, so Caribbean is a cultural platform and we celebrate all things Caribbean through arts, culture, lifestyle. So I know you do tours and I'm really grateful to be on one today, so let's go. All right, let's go. So tell me where we are. So we're at Tafari Tribe, which it's like an all things store. So you come here to get really gorgeous um, dresses, jewelry, incense. They have soaps imported from the Caribbean, from Trinidad and Jamaica. All right, so next on our hit list is Allen's Bakery, which I understand is a cultural and culinary institution. And it's also a neighborhood institution. I mean, I don't remember not coming here on a weekend, whether it was for hard dough bread, currants rolls. So I've never had a currant roll before. What is it exactly? Yeah, so it's a ginormous pastry that they roll out. Yeah. And a currant is a dried ra raisin, and so the, the currants are actually rolled inside of the pastry. Shelly, this is absolutely delicious. Where are we headed to next? We're heading to Levate Market, just on the corner right here. This is my favorite market in the neighborhood. This is a West Indian owned West Indian market. And in addition to that, a lot of the produce is actually imported directly from the Caribbean. So the owner actually grows his own produce and then brings it right here to Flatbush, to Little Caribbean. So I know I told you that I wanted to end this tour with a sweet treat from the tropics. So where are we? We're at Cream and Coco. Their ice cream is culturally delicious. Um, so they have rum and raisin, they have vegan sour stuff ice cream sorrel sorbet and over 30 Caribbean flavors that they pack here. This is my flavor right here, island gal. Makes me want to like, like do like a little dance. <laughs> this is the perfect way to end the tour. Uh, tell us how we can find you. Our Instagram is I am Caribbean and Little Caribbean NYC. All right, so everyone come to Little Caribbean. You do not have to board a plane to visit the tropics. You can island hop right here in Flatbush. We told you they were coming and now they are here. Cicadas are emerging and starting to swarm parts of New Jersey after living underground for 17 years. News Force Brian Thompson takes you to one of the many epicenters right now in Princeton. Listen. For the first time in 17 years, billions of brood 10 cicadas are emerging from underground in New Jersey and several other eastern states. That unmistakable hum designed to attract other cicadas of the other sex and mate. As you can see as they crawl all over Rutgers entomologist George Hamilton and myself at the Princeton battleground, they are fearless as they climb our bodies faster than we can brush them off. We finally gave up, as Hamilton explained. Uh, they are trying to get to a point, so once they are ready to fly away, they're up off the ground. Fearless, harmless, they don't bite. And climb they do, after being buried in the ground, feasting on the trees' roots for 17 years. So when they come, they come en masse, squeezing out of their exoskeletons, getting ready to fly. The ground littered with those shells that even a dog could eat. It is a wonder of nature that has brought the leaves of Lawrenceville here on the same days, now for the third time in 34 years. The first time they stopped their car, thinking the noise was its engine. I thought my car <laughs> went thought the car was broken. Right. That noise happens only during the day for the next two or three weeks. And while irritating to some, this woman sat in a chair telling me she was taking it all in. There are several different broods of cicadas around the world, most on a 13 to 17 year timeline. In this brood, a small timbal on his abdomen makes the mating sound to find the female. Now, could Open I hear it if I. No, that it's they're not. It's not vibrating it right now. It's not interested in me as right. the partner. In other words, right, exactly. But when they do find the right partners, they'll do what the birds and the bees do. The female will lay her eggs in the branches, and then it's all over. And the females will start laying eggs, and once they're done laying eggs, it'll be over. So the sound you're hearing. should last about two to three weeks here. And then, oh, hi, do you wanna say anything? No, okay. And then 
the life cycle ends for these and begins anew for their offspring. In Princeton, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here next time.